Charlie. As you can see, he's got no eyes. It always amazes me when people ask me, is he blind or is he, does he have no eyes? I wonder, is this is a trick question. <laughs> it's, it shouldn't, I, I had to ask an ophthalmologist about this because I, I don't understand. You can be blind and have no eyes. And, and a lady stopped and she asked me, English isn't her first language, and she asked if she could talk to Charlie. And it's okay, because for dogs, English is not their first language either. <laughs> and when she got done having her conversation, it was only a few moments, she, she came up to me and in her halted English, she said, he was very beautiful. He doesn't need his eyes because he sees with his heart. And, you know, those moments when we have something like that, that was a long time ago. He's 12 now, and he was very young at the time. And those moments in our life when we have something like that, we, we need to welcome them and listen because a lot of times we just let them go and, and, and don't pay any attention. But it was important because that helped me see how other people see Charlie. And sometimes we don't recognize how other people see us and perceive us. Um, but he does. He's non-judgmental. And he just he looks beyond and sees what's inside and what matters. And he's done that his whole life. And that, that's what's really extraordinary. We got, I got a call from a friend recently who said, you know, we miss having him come around because not only does he see into our hearts, but he sees into our souls. And I, you know, how does he do that? It's just a couple minutes that he spends with people, and yet he breaks down all the barriers. So it makes you wonder, how, how, what is it that he does that's different than other dogs and other people? What, what does he do? I, I don't really know. This is, a, this is during an actual visit, um, and you can see, so you can, now you get a sense of his size. He's little, well not little, but you know, normal size beagle. But you notice it's eye gaze. So he's looking at the person, so this little beagle with no eyes still gaze into, gazes into people's eyes. And he's being very patient actually, because he really just wants to climb up in the person's lap. I'm going to try and do this here. So you see eye to eye. But you see right there, there's a bucket of treats in her hand. <laughs> Every dog has a superpower. Charlie's superpower is his nose. It's actually a little bit of a bionic nose. And he knows exactly where every piece of food is, even if it's not what we consider food. And so when, when we're filling out this tray, it's, it's a game, um, you notice the lid is back on that tray, the, on, on that bucket of treats, because he will climb right in her lap and get that out if, there's, if she leaves the treat lid off. But she's learning a skill. She's learning how to follow instructions. She's learning um, to be socially engaged. She's learning to play again, this patient is. And Charlie's being very calm, very serene while she's doing this. And you see everybody's face. Well, you can't see her face because she's got a mask on. But everybody's smiling and laughing. And that's the joy of this, right? And you notice my quote here, kindness, it's all about, it, it creates love, right? <coughs> that's how you see into the heart again. Um, so, let's see. <laughs> so this superpower of his nose, it lets him pick exactly where the treats were placed. They were not placed under each each bin, each, each bone, it was a, three treats were placed in there. He selected specifically where those treats were placed. And what happened was when they were picked, she, the patient claps and is so happy. Other dogs will just wipe them all out. It doesn't matter though, because what happened is there's joy, right? And it's not about winning, it's about the joy of, of playing, which is what you want. Early in our visits, I had a, a man break down in tears because he said, you know, you came. I didn't expect that. And it's these random acts of kindness 
that get me. Here I have cancer. I didn't expect to have cancer. And you took time out of your day. A person I didn't know with their dog. And you visited me. That was really hard. I mean, he's bawling. We stayed for just a couple minutes because he couldn't. And, but, but it changed his care. It changed his outcome. And this was 10 years ago, and I still remember that man. But this is what happens. They touch your heart in such a way that you remember forever. There was another man, uh, it was Christmas Eve, we went, we were walking through the hall, and he comes running out of his room. Well, I don't know how, it came out of his room very fast. And he said, I heard there's a blind dog on the hall. This I have to see. Oh, he was huge, he was a big, big man. And he had hands that were as big as Charlie's head. And he got down on the floor, and he grabbed Charlie's head and was looking at him. And he, he didn't want anything to do with any of the dogs. And he was like, he grabbed him, not mean grab, nice grab, and was talking to him. And then he got back up and said, that'll do. And he went back in his room. <laughs> you know, and it was just like, he was happy to have met Charlie. And he was inspired by him. And that had nothing to do with any of the dogs after that. But Charlie touched his life. You know, and that was cool. He knew, you know, and Charlie wasn't scared by this giant of a man. He was just like, hey, whatever. This, this guy's cool. But somehow, he touched his life, too. So, they know. They know how to be kind. And when we walk through the halls in the hospital, I'm going to tell you, there are three things people notice. First, I have a beagle. They're like, wow, how'd you get a beagle in the hospital? <laughs> and then they go, hey, he's calm. And the third thing they notice is he's blind. Or they ask me, how did you train a dog to walk with his eyes closed? <laughs> yeah, and it's like, wait, I'd, why would I do that? <laughs> so, you know. Um, and this fellow, look, these guys mirror each other. You know, it's... It's the, I call this my thinking pose. <laughs> this guy had a very special relation. You can see the relationship they have. Just together. They're together. They're in it together. Um, you know, it's, they were a team. You know, if Charlie can do it, I can do it. And I heard that so many times. So, not only was it the staff, I mean, not only was it patients that we worked with, but it was also the staff. Um, Charlie trained the nurses. So they'd come in while we were visiting patients, and they'd change IV bags. And Charlie would look at them like, okay, where's my cookie? <laughs> because he couldn't see what they were doing, and he'd hear this crinkle. So he trained them to bring him treats. <laughs> and, you know, and so this is one of the nurses at the hospital. And you can see... They were having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation, and the joy that, the, that he brought the nurses. And, you know, honestly, these guys needed it as much as the patients. Sometimes they would be so sad at the end of the day. Maybe a patient got some sad news. And they would be just as distressed as the, nurse, as the patients, and they needed it. So, and here we are. We're at NC State at the vet school. We were participating in this project, and he's wearing a vest that um, in this picture. But before he gets to that, I heard they were so worried, some of the folks were so worried because here's this blind dog and they weren't sure if he would be able to do everything they needed him to do. Um, like would he be able to, how was he going to navigate the room? How, would he run into stuff, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we, my friend who was coordinating this said, don't worry, Patricia has a cue for everything. There are, and they pestered her all day long. So we get there, the first thing Charlie, I take Charlie off his leash, the first thing he does, let's see, you see up there, you see that little bag up there? That's a bag of pepperoni. <laughs> yeah. He runs through the room, there's about four people in this room, it's not a very big room, and there's lots of tripods and wires. He runs through the room, up to that bag, puts his paws on the shelf, turns his head and looks at me and says, like, Mama, can I have some, please? <laughs> he endeared everybody 
to their heart, to his, I mean, he, they were in love. They were in awe and love. And what happened was, so this was a uh, trial to see how the vest worked for, for dogs that were going to be working remotely. So their handlers wouldn't be able to see their dogs, and they needed to know if the dogs were doing what they asked them to do. So were they sitting, were they downing, whatever the cue was that their handlers were giving them. And I thought, oh, Charlie would be perfect because he can't see the handler anyway. You can see on here, there's little blue lights. That uh, measures how the body moves. What <laughs> he was, he didn't do everything perfectly. So how, about half of the results were not valid. But they didn't care because he was fun. And they were engaged with him. And they had a blast working with Charlie because they, they were a part of his team, right? I did this with my other dog, Jade, and they had a good time with her. And she had almost perfect scores, right? They could use almost everything that they did with her. But they had more fun with Charlie because she was part, he was part of their team. All right. So the lessons from Charlie are celebrate who you are. You know, you're unique. You're different. You know, how many blind dogs do you know that have no eyes? 2% of dogs that are blind have their eyes removed. Trust and believe in yourself and those around you, right? They're gonna, they're gonna do well with you. Leave your doubts behind. Don't worry about the things, you know, it's, it's not gonna matter. Engage others in your dreams, you'll go far. And you will discover anything is possible. So how did Charlie get the way he is? He came to me when he was a tiny puppy. That was the night I got him. He had his eyes. He was born blind, and he had um, glaucoma on top of it, so his eyes had to be removed. You can see the eyes here. But he was also a mischief maker. <laughs> the quote for this is, feathers, what feathers? I see no feathers. <laughs> but he had a friend, and that was Sophie. She navigated she taught him how to navigate the world, and we all need somebody in our life to teach us how to navigate the world, someone we can trust in. So it took Charlie a year to learn how to go down the stairs. This is Sophie teaching Charlie how to go downstairs. I tried. I couldn't do it. And um, So cookies help. We all need a little bit of cookies in our life, right? <laughs> And we need a friend that we can trust to guide us through troubled waters or down tricky stairs. So Sophie was his partner and the stairs and the cookies. So he had to trust Sophie not to eat his cookies, and she never did. She never ate his cookies, and she was there to guide him. And then, I love this picture. It's, it's not the best photo, but it's a great picture of walking down the beach. No. A beagle walking down the beach is not something you see every day, especially if it's a beagle with no eyes. You know, he just looks kind of regal here. So it's at the gardens, um, and he has a tag on that says, Charlie, magical miracle worker. And that was what the nurses call him, because he had a way of knowing what everybody needed, um, whether it was to play or to be calm or to just be patient and, and work with you. I mean, it didn't matter. He knew exactly what people needed. <laughs> and sometimes he got muddy. Not very often. Um, and then he cleaned up really well. <laughs> so, you know, um, that was his staff photo for a long time. And this little girl knew how to communicate with Charlie in a way that was extraordinarily special. Because she was there right by his side. And again, like Sophie. Not that I'm not comparing her to a dog. But right by his side. And she trusted him. And he could trust her. And he knew that. And we played a game. We played a different game. And Charlie felt safe enough to come right in between and get really tight. And Charlie doesn't usually do that. He doesn't usually get that tight and close with somebody. And then we talk, that's a pouch that we toss. But I was t explaining to her, you put treats in there, and then we toss it. Um, and she was having a good time. And you can see Charlie's just watching. He's not going to take the treats away. He's just watching. Um, and he's waiting. He's waiting, like, OK, are you done yet? Are you done? And 
And these are my three dogs. I have three. Um, so Jade is our current is his current Sophie, and she navigates the world for Charlie now. Make sure that everything is safe. And then we have a new one, Ella. And Charlie and Ella are snuggle bunnies. So still today, he has a happy face. And he says, celebrate, because anything is possible. Trust and believe in yourself. Leave your doubts behind. Engage others in your dreams, you'll go far. And you will discover anything is possible. Because that's what Charlie does. And, and you can do anything. That's it.